A few weeks ago, I had the amazing opportunity to take a trip to the east coast of Canada, specifically Nova Scotia. Something about the Maritimes and being by the ocean has captivated me, with over 13,000 kilometers of coastline surrounded by the rolling sea, lush forests, and diverse wildlife. It's easy to see why it's considered one of the most beautiful provinces in Canada. In this video, we're going to be learning more about Canada's wildlife and taking a look at one of the largest and first fully operating wildlife rescues in Nova Scotia. So stick around and you'll get to see some of the amazing rescued animals that can be found right here in Canada and learn more about the challenges that they face. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and if you're new then hello! It's been a while since I've had a video out, um, about three months to be exact. Summer is just a really busy month for me. I just finished working almost two weeks in a row but that is because I knew I'd be going on vacation soon. So I'm currently on vacation in Halifax, Nova Scotia and I am staying with uh, Emma Sampson. Emma herself has also been very busy this summer and she's been working hard at Hope for Wildlife. So since I'm out here and I'm staying with her for the time being, she decided that uh, it would be nice to give me a little tour for Hope for Wildlife. Hope for Wildlife is a rehabilitation and education center located in the east coast of Canada. They do a lot of amazing work. Some people might uh, know Hope for Wildlife from the show on TV. I know I grew up watching Hope for Wildlife and my mom is actually a huge fan of the TV show. So they rescue, rehabilitate, and release over thousands of animals every year that are native here to Canada. So Emma has been so kind as to take me to the facility and give me a little behind the scenes tour. I'm very excited to be able to have this opportunity and to share it with you guys. So let's get right on to it and go check out Hope for Wildlife. So we're taking a break from the usual topic of reptiles today and we are arriving at Hope for Wildlife, which is located in Seaforth in the Eastern Shore region. It also happens to be a short drive from Emma's place. The property alone is beautiful and is open for the public every Saturday if you ever want to come visit yourself. So this building here is like the, the education center. Okay. these little guys. Yeah. They're my favorite. What year were you here before? Uh, it must have been two or three years ago. I love these birds. We saw them when we went to the uh, the wildlife park. Oh nice. Yeah so Norman who's this one here. Norman. <laughs> he, we've had him for over 11 years. Oh wow. Yeah and then Evie's down here. Really cute. Evie only has one wing. Um, Norman has both of his wings, but his muscles were atrophied too much to regain flight. Aww. So he can't fly. I think it's about 20 feet he can fly. Okay. Oh my god, this thing's huge. Yeah. Show us your big axolotl bod. I have no idea how old they are, but I imagine they are quite old. Yeah, no, this guy looks ancient. Yeah. And they're just huge. Like, I can't even imagine. Like, Literally, would be like your whole hand. That's Clover. Oh my goodness! Hi. Oh my goodness! It's so cute. I love how it's just like going through the hay. <laughs> Clover's been here since 2004. Um, he was found smuggled in a suitcase at the airport. Oh no! So um, now he's here. Oh. Oh my God! He's, he's so a special cute. case. I love him. You're the sweetest little thing ever. He's got a little basketball in case he wants to shoot some hoops. Like, amazing. The education center housed a few animals and offered some good educational resources for raising awareness on how human activity can impact wildlife. 
This raccoon this lived for almost a year with this bird feeder stuck on its head. Oh my goodness, how um, did it live that long? Photos were taken of the animal in the fall. It wasn't caught until this next summer. Oh. Um, yeah, like I, it literally must have just been eating like the tiniest little things that it could like fit through here. As you can see, these are everyday man-made items that have caused drastic situations for these animals. He's a grandfather here. Oh, he's, he's a grandpa. Very permanent. <laughs> there he is in there sleeping. sleeping. So he he's like a he's a little head trauma guy. Aww. So <laughs> when he's not just sleeping in here, which is basically all the time, mm -hmm. he's he likes to walk around and go and get his food and stuff. But he's always just like leaning Aww. to one side a little bit. <laughs> That's why his name's Twisty. It's a nice little habitat. <laughs> Oh, well, that's interesting. Legal to rehab, illegal to rehab. Yeah, so I think I was like telling you about all uh, like how bears and moose and all that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's um, not legal to rehab. Unfortunately, some laws in Nova Scotia prevent the rehabbing of certain animal species, which includes coyotes, wolves, moose, and bear. These two enclosures here are like hope for wildlife animals. Okay. Um, this is Bonnie and Clyde. They're oh. the ferrets. They're probably sleeping in there. Your little face popped out. Hello. <laughs> Sleepy? Yeah, so like these guys are also like education animals that go out to okay. you know, schools and stuff. Yeah. These were both also just like surrendered pets that mm. people couldn't care for anymore. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Oh, he's so cute. Yeah. And then there's the other one up there. Oh, hi. So like this is all one enclosure here, kind of. Okay. Um, like it's technically made so that it can be two separate enclosures, but there's that little door right there. Okay. So they just leave it open so they have mm. the whole thing here. This is like the rabbit rescue that they partner with. So Aww. obviously these are not wild bunnies or anything. These are domestic ones. So these are all like adoptable. Oh yeah. And yeah, people like when we're open on Saturdays and stuff, mm -hmm. like we'll have someone like with the rescue here. So then people yeah. can like ask questions or fill out application forms and stuff like that. Oh, <laughs> I love bunnies though. I know. We continued to walk around the property and beautiful gardens where some peacocks and geese were roaming freely. Oh my god, <laughs> let me see. That's Molly and her babies. Oh my goodness, I've never seen a baby peacock yeah, before. No <laughs> These little peacock babies were just the cutest. <laughs> Um, can the babies get- Oh, wow, look at that! Oh, I've never seen them go that high before. Impressive. So, Edward came here, um, injured, broken wing, and even though it, like, healed and stuff, she just never fully gained flight back. Yeah. Um, so, she can't fly too far. Now she's here. Oh, I love Edward. Edward makes cute noises. Meet today. I like uh, men, <laughs> not yeah. children. because both of its eyes are like very dilated but mm -hmm. one of them is like permanently dilated uh, it can't um constrict or anything okay so as far as i know it still has like vision out of it but not you yeah. know it's, it doesn't work <laughs> as well as it should or anything Aww. As we kept seeing and learning more about each animal, it was quite clear that these animals wouldn't be where they are today if it wasn't for this amazing rescue. 
they really were given a second chance in life. I like that. <laughs> Ralph. Ralph is clearly famous. Yeah, Ralph has been through some some stuff. <laughs> I'm assuming that must be what Ralph's place is named after. How have I never heard of Ralph before? <laughs> Why is it all of a sudden like Ralphina? <laughs> oh, I think I realized. I think it's yeah. a girl. <laughs> Ralph is actually a girl. Ralphina. Oh my god. Our video is starting to come to an end, and I really hope you guys enjoyed the short tour. There was so much more to see than what I showed you guys here today, but the rest of it was behind the scenes and I unfortunately wasn't able to film those areas at this time. But if you want to see more of behind the scenes at Hope for Wildlife, then check out their annual open house day. The last open house did just pass on September 10th and the next one won't be until next year. But keep an eye out for the next open house date where you can get behind the scenes access to areas such as the medical facilities, bird and mammal nurseries, recovery units, flight cages and more. I also did get to meet Hope herself and she actually arrived when we were in the education center earlier, but she wasn't prepared to be on camera and preferred to not be filmed at that time, which I totally understand it was the end of the day. But I do have some footage of her from a previous year with her Pine Martin Gretel from when I first had the opportunity to visit Hope for Wildlife, the zoo I worked for. Welcome to Wildlife, this is Gretel. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I enjoyed my time here in Nova Scotia and took in as much of the natural beauty as possible before it was time to go home. I'll miss this beautiful province, but I know I'll be back again soon, but for now it's back to home sweet home in Toronto. Thank you guys all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.